All right, yeah. So thank you, Rustam. And go mm -hmm. ahead with part two. Okay. So right. So let, let me just like review very briefly that we consider um, differential relations which are imposed on maps of a fixed dimension. So for example, we can consider immersions of co-dimension D, or we can consider submersions of dimension D, or just maps with prescribed singularities of dimension D. And an important property that we are looking for is uh, property of the pullback, that if you have a solution, then the pullback of a solution, it should be a solution. In this case, we can construct uh, the modular space of solutions. Basically, we can just get all possible simplices together with uh, solutions uh, maps uh, into the simplices and we just glue the simplices together whenever we can we get this huge space and it's a classifying space for solutions and it it's actually a little bit more than the classifying space uh, in particular we can define characteristic class classes and characteristic classes are in bijective correspondence with uh, homology classes of the modular space uh, but the modular space itself is very complicated and um, it's very hard to use this modular space to calculate uh, the characteristic classes. And now this is where the B principle comes. Uh, so suppose that we have uh, an open stable differential relation. Uh, I have defined already this modular space of solutions, uh, but we can also define modular space of formal solutions. Uh, so we discussed before formal solutions uh, in the context of the H principle, and we can use formal solutions to define the modular space uh, H M sub R. This point is a little bit subtle because uh, it's not immediate that actually it's not true that for formal solutions enjoy uh, pullback property, they do not. Uh, so some work needs to be done before this is true. But, uh, and it's a little bit technical. Uh, so one thing over there is that uh, here, everything is in terms of tangential structures, but one has to turn to normal structures. And even for normal structures, formal solutions do not enjoy the pullback property. So one has to really uh, like use technical arguments to construct this modular space. And this modular space may not look so nice uh, as a modular space of solutions. But in the end, um, we still get a map from the modular space of solutions to the modular space of formal solutions. And uh, this map in some instances uh, is very well known. Like for example, we may consider the differential relation of coverings. <coughs> so this is a differential relation whose solutions are coverings the coverings are just maps of dimension zero uh, with no critical points. And uh, in this case, the modular space can be uh, calculated. In fact, uh, we had this more general example, uh, the example of the modular space of submersions. So here we considered submersions of dimension D, meaning that we considered fiber bundles where fibers are manifolds of dimension D. And this was a classifying space of such submersions. Now for coverings, our fiber consists of just some number of points. So the fiber is a discrete set of points. And of course, a diffeomorphism group of the discrete set of points is just the permutation group. And so now over here, uh, <coughs> we consider the covering. And so when uh, the fiber consists of n points, so the diffeomorphism group is the permutation group of n elements, and the classifying space is just B sigma n. Uh, and then, uh, of course, this n could be any non-negative number, and so we have to take this uh, disjoint union of classifying spaces. And so this is the uh, differential, this is the modular space for coverings. Uh, on the other hand, one can identify the modular space of formal solutions with omega infinity s infinity, the infinite loop space of the sphere spectrum. And then there is this map, which is called barrett preedy aquilin map. And uh, it's, it is known that this map is not a weak homotopy equivalence, but it is a so-called group completion. So just looking at this example, uh, you can see that uh, we 
do not, we cannot expect that this map always uh, is a big amount of equivalence, but we may um, guess that often this map is a group completion, and this is true. Uh, so uh, to compare the H principle with the B principle, so let's uh, recall that H principle is defined for coordinate invariant open relations. And then we have space of solutions, space of formal solutions, and the H principle states that the map from the space of solutions to the space of formal solutions is a weak homotopy equivalence. Uh, now for the B principle, we consider an open stable relation. Uh, and uh, open stable relation, it's already assumes that we, we consider coordinate invariant relations. And for these differential relations, we constructed the modular space of solutions. And there exists also the modular space of stable formal solutions. And then the B principle asserts that this map from the modular space of solutions to the modular space of formal solutions is a group completion. So this uh, M sub R is, uh, is a monoid and this is, this is a topological group. So here's the theorem. Uh, suppose that we have an open stable differential relation. Suppose that the dimension of maps is less than uh, zero or equal to zero. So this means that we consider like say for example, immersions or maps of manifolds of small dimension into manifolds of uh, high dimensions with singularities. Or when D equals zero, we can consider uh, equidimensional maps maps of manifolds of dimension M to manifolds of the same dimension M. Or if this condition is not satisfied, suppose that every Morse function is a solution of the differential relation R. And uh, this condition is kind of uh, <coughs> reasonable because you see every function uh, can be approximated by a Morse function. And uh, so it's mm, kind of nice to assume that every Morse function is a solution. And then uh, the B principle for such a differential relation uh, holds true, meaning that the inclusion of the modular space of solutions to the modular space of formal solutions is a group completion of a topological monoid. So more precisely, uh, if you know uh, gamma spaces, then uh, it turns out that this modular space, it has an additional structure, which is called Siegel gamma space structure. So this is the first space in the single gamma space structure. And then uh, this is an infinite loop space. And so this map is uh, the single group completion. Uh, so this might, might be a little bit uh, like, mm, mm, technical, but uh, I will give some examples and uh, you will see what it means. So, so, so the first example here is an uh, example uh, by Wells. So this is a very old theorem, uh, I think from 60s. And so here uh, we consider the Hirsch-Smale H principle and the Wells uh, B principle. So this is a comparison. So the H principle, in the H principle, we consider formal immersions, which are fiberwise epimorphisms. So fiberwise epimorphism means that here M is a manifold, N is a manifold, and here this F capital is a map of the tangent bundle of M to the tangent bundle of N. And this map uh, takes a fiber, every fiber of the tangent bundle of M, which is the tangent space of M at some point. So it takes every fiber into some fiber in TN. So fibers are mapped two fibers. So one fiber is mapped just to one fiber. And first map, first of all, uh, the fibers of the tangent bundles are vector spaces. And so when you restrict F to any uh, fiber, uh, you get a map from a vector space to a vector space. So this map uh, has to be linear. And then we say that this is a fiberwise homomorphism. And now we require, require that this fiberwise homomorphism is actually an, ep actually, uh, I'm sorry, this is not an epimorphism, this is monomorphism. So this is a misprint, I apologize. For formal immersions, we consider fiberwise monomorphisms. So it, uh, this map should uh, 
uh, embed include every tangent space into tangent space over here. Uh, then the smell here H principle asserts that every formal immersion, so every fiberwise apomorphism, can be deformed by homotopy through formal immersions into the differential of F. So this is uh, going to be a map. For, again, so here F is just a map from a manifold M to N, and its differential is a map from the tangent bundle of M to the tangent bundle of N. And so from every formal emotion, we can get uh, an emotion. And uh, of course, uh, it's hard to study emotions. Uh, this is a differential geometry problem. Just the existence of an emotion is already a, a complicated problem. Uh, if you do not use homotopy theory, uh, and then on the other hand, if you consider formal immersions, so then this is a homotopy theoretic problem. Uh, so it's much, much easier. So this is a point uh, behind the H principle. And uh, next, uh, this should be compared to the Wells B principle for immersions. Stable formal immersions are similar to formal immersions, except that now we consider uh, fiberwise, uh, again, this is a misprint. So these are fiberwise monomorphisms, so, but not from TM to TN, but from stabilized tangent bundle. So TM is a tangent bundle to the manifold M, and epsilon to the K is uh, a trivial, the trivial K dimensional vector bundle over the manifold M. And this is just the Whitney sum of the two vector bundles. And now we consider this stabilized uh, monomorphism. Uh, it is well possible that there is no uh, map from TM to TN, but there is a map from the stabilized uh, tangent bundle of M to the stabilized tangent bundle of N. Like for example, you can consider, I don't know, the tangent bundle to the sphere. The tangent bundle to the sphere is not trivial. So there is no map from the tangent bundle to the sphere uh, to tangent bundle of uh, R2, right? But on the other hand, uh, the stabilized tangent bundle of the sphere is trivial. And so for, uh, there is a stable formal uh, emotion like that. And then the Wells B principle asserts that every stable formal immersion uh, can be deformed by concordance. Uh, and this concordance is itself a stable formal immersion. Uh, and so this could be deformed by concordance into a stabilized differential of an immersion. So when you apply a concordance, uh, this manifold M can be modified by surgery and you would get another manifold M prime. Uh, and so this is, uh, that, that's why uh, this is kind of, this does not give you as much information as the H principle. The B principle does not give you as much information as the, B, uh, as the H principle. But on the other hand, as I will show later, uh, the calculations related to the uh, B principle are much, much simpler. So this is an example for emotions. And uh, so here, actually, I kind of uh, just wanted to remind you about this male paradox. This is, a, uh, this is uh, the paradox that comes from the uh, smile hirsch H principle. Uh, the claim is that uh, a sphere, two-dimensional sphere in R3 can be averted inside out. <coughs> Uh, and the erosion can be done through regular homotopy, meaning that we can deform this sphere into itself little by little, uh, so that at each moment of time, we have an immersion. So it means that we allow self-intersections, but we do not allow uh, cusps or any other singularities. So locally, at any point uh, of the sphere, we should have a tangent plane. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the version is kind of at the end of the process, then outside normal should turn into the inside normal. So th this is possible. Of course, uh, if you try to do it uh, just in an easy way, just by pushing the uh, lower hemisphere up and upper hemisphere down, uh, then uh, over the equator, you would get uh, some singular points. And so such an aversion is prohibited. It's not possible, it's not allowed, but there exists a 
more complicated a version that actually does the trick. <coughs> and here, here, I wanted to point out that uh, if you just do it directly, uh, you just take a sphere and just try to avert it. Uh, this is not very easy question. It's actually quite a hard question. Uh, though it has been solved by uh, quite a few people in many different ways. Uh, on the other hand, if we reformulate this problem in terms of formal immersions uh, and uh, use the H principle, which states that uh, there is a correspondence between uh, formal immersions and genuine immersions, then this problem can be uh, easily solved. So this, this becomes an easy, easy problem uh, that does not require uh, much knowledge. Uh, um, so Rustam, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry to interrupt. So yep. there's a question on chat uh -huh. um, asking about the Wells uh, HB HB principle, uh, and it says like, well, so you start with some M that you would want to immerse on N, but instead you produce some M prime. Mm -hmm. But can you kind of then use this somehow to then maybe go back and produce an immersion of the original M? Right. This is uh, Alvaro. This is kind of the question that uh, we were discussing with you uh, before we started recording. Remember, I was saying that kind of it would be great to see if the B principle could be actually helped to uh, can be used uh, and uh, if it uh, helps to understand H principle. So indeed, here uh, we start with one manifold M, and we uh, in the end uh, we get a map from another manifold. Uh, so from manifold M prime. Uh, so we, for example, if you start trying, if you want to immerse one manifold M, so the B principle just uh, gives you another manifold that is immersed uh, into N, not the original manifold. And <clears throat> I think that the B principle should help uh, to construct uh, the map of the immersion from the manifold M though I do not have any applications and I don't have any evidence for that. The only thing that I wanted to say here is that uh, you see uh, this homotopy principle and Bordism principle, it should be com compared with homotopy theory and uh, homology theory. So homotopy theory gives us more precise invariance, uh, but it is very hard to calculate. On the other hand, homology theory does not give uh, so strong invariants, so these are homologies rather than homotopies. Uh, but on the other hand, homology groups are much more, much easier computable. And on the other hand, uh, when we work in homotopy theory, we use extensively homology theory. So even when we try to cal calculate homotopy invariants, we always use homology to kind of to do the calculations. And so my hope is that. Uh, we would be able to use uh, this uh, Bordism principle uh, to, uh, to calculate uh, homotopy uh, invariance of, of solutions, not just the Bordism invariance of solutions. <coughs> but so though this seems kind of somewhat strange and maybe even ridiculous that kind of you start with uh, a formal immersion of one manifold and you end up with an immersion uh, of another manifold. Uh, still, you see, when you do this process, uh, kind of you can calculate, say, abstractions to, uh, to do various construct constructions, and these abstractions produce characteristic classes, which are meaningful cohomology classes, characteristic classes that characterize uh, solutions to differential relations. So this construction is still kind of not, not so as it may seem from this example. Um, but yeah, this is a great question. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. <coughs> so here there are some uh, known B principles uh, and related constructions. So I have already mentioned the uh, Wells theorem on emotions. Uh, there is uh, Eliasberg theorem on Legendrian uh, emotions. Uh, Eliasberg produced a so-called uh, equivariant spectrum. Uh, so it's not uh, the, the, the spectrum that uh, I would like to have. Uh, and uh, later I will discuss some spectrums that can be uh, associated with uh, differential relations. And that spectrum is somewhat different from the spectrum that 
Eliasberg constructed. Uh, basically, Eliasberg uh, used uh, tangential structures, and because of that, the spectra that he obtained are not precisely the spectra from the uh, classical homology theory, uh, but uh, we can use uh, normal uh, structures, and then we would just produce a standard spectrum. Then uh, I have already mentioned this barat pridi and Quillen theorem. Uh, there are constructions of the modular space uh, in singularity theory, and these are by, due to Kazarian, there are other constructions by Rimani, Ando, Suj, uh, and myself. Uh, there are theorems closely related to the B principle uh, by Rimani, Ando, Suj, and myself uh, for <coughs> submersions. Uh, there is an important map uh, by Matson and Tillman from the disjoint union of B, D, F, M, Ds to, uh, to the spectrum, which is called, to the infinite loop space of the spectrum, which is called M, T, O, D. In the case where D equals two, uh, this work uh, led to a solution of the Mumford conjecture. And that, that, that was uh, one of the reasons why this map was uh, very important. Uh, the construction that I propose, that I discussed here, uh, does not rely on the H principle of closed manifolds. Uh, and uh, some of these constructions that I discussed above, they were relying on the H principle for closed manifolds. H principle for closed manifolds may not be true, uh, while uh, I have proved in the beginning of the talk that a principle uh, of coordinate invariant open differential relations over open manifolds is always, always true. And I, in, for these constructions, I, I just need H principle for over open manifolds. And this is kind of a big distinction. Uh, so for example, uh, I've seen that some of you are interested in uh, um, symplectic topology. You may know that the H principle for symplectic geometry is true over open manifolds, but for closed manifolds, uh, it's a totally different question. It's uh, not known when uh, a closed manifold admits, for example, a symplectic structure, but over open manifolds, it's uh, kind of, one can just consider uh, almost complex structures to solve the problem. Uh, then uh, the constructions that I discussed with modular spaces also gives a more precise relation between solutions and stable formal solutions. So there's uh, some advantages of the instructions that I give here. Uh, actually, I'm, I think that, right. So, uh, and so kind of, I will now like discuss uh, some interpretation of this theorem and I will discuss, uh, so again, the B principle basically just considers the modular space of uh, solutions and the modular space of stable formal solutions. And the claim is that this map is a group completion of topological monoid. And in fact, under these conditions, ex uh, except when D equals zero, uh, so just just no, just in this case, when D equals zero, this, this would not be true. But uh, when D is not zero, uh, this map is going to be just a weak homotopy equivalence. In fact, this will, would be just a homotopy equivalence. So these two spaces would be uh, would be the same. Uh, I should also say that this theorem uh, has several generalizations that I considered in uh, other papers, uh, and <coughs> over there, uh, like uh, Morse functions, uh, do, do not play such a, a prominent role. And one can consider also like more general maps. Uh, not just maps with prescribed singularities, but uh, maps with uh, maybe uh, like such such maps as embeddings. And uh, I formulate this in terms of classes of maps. So generalizations are possible, and uh, for some generalizations, so this group completion may play uh, a more important role than in this theorem. But in this theorem, uh, group completion only appears when a d equals zero. Uh, so now let me, uh, as I said, I'm going to dis discuss now this modular space M sub R, and then I'm going to discuss the topology of the modular space uh, H M sub R 
And I uh, would like to convince you that uh, this M sub R is very complicated. On the other hand, the space H M sub R is not so complicated. Uh, so first, let, let us start with M sub R. So the observation is that uh, when we consider this modular space M sub R, so it is glued from uh, simplices. And over each simplex, we have a map. In particular, over each point of M sub R, we have some fiber. Uh, if we now take, for example, all say on this picture, I consider modular space for solutions uh, of dimension two. For example, one, uh, one fiber could be a, a torus, two dimensional torus. And then we can take uh, all points in M sub R in the modular space uh, that uh, have the torus over them. And uh, then uh, we would take all these points. And the claim is that all those points uh, form a subspace of M sub R. And that space is homotopy equivalent to B div uh, of the torus. Uh, so here, this is just kind of this, this part. Now we can take another stratum of points, for example, with the fiber, uh, which is a torus with one socal collapse to point. And then if we take all points uh, with such a fiber, then this forms a stratum, a subspace of M sub R, which is homotopy equivalent to B div of this space. And uh, similarly, we can consider some other fibers. Uh, and uh, we get this, always we get B div of the fiber. For example, on this picture, all fibers are fibers of Morse functions. So a Morse function may have the torus fiber, a Morse function may have this fiber and this fiber. So this is basically a fiber uh, of the map with two critical points on the same level. And so you can see that this modular space of R modular space of solutions is glued from B div of the fibers of the solutions. Uh, B div um, of the fibers. Rustam, yes. So, sorry to interrupt. Can you say, yes, I think I don't understand the picture. So where do you see exactly the singularities of R here in this picture or? Like, I mean, you uh, have these manifolds, but where, 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 where are the maps exactly? Right, so maybe let me actually draw. Can I draw just annotate? Yeah, okay. So, so um, remember that we were discussing that M sub R is a classifying space, right? And so over here, so if you have any, say for example, map from M to N, so I'm kind of uh, not immediately answering your question, but I hope that this discussion would help to understand what's going on. And so remember that uh, this was kind of, that for any map F, there is this classifying map U sub F, right? And in fact, uh, this F was a pullback of some universal map. So this is kind of some, there is a universal map uh, of some space uh, to the modular space of solutions. And <clears throat> this map is such that if you take the modular space and restrict this map over one simplex, it will be just a solution to the differential relation over that simplex, right? And so in particular, we have this U, right? So again, remember that M sub R, it was just union of simplices. And over each simplex, uh, there was a solution. Right, and now this blue one is just this, this WR, right? Uh, and <clears throat> and now uh, what, what we do is we uh, take or any point here in M sub R, and we look at the fiber. For example, here, the fiber is just empty set over this point, right? And so for example, for immersions, the claim is that if you take all points in M sub R that have empty fiber, then all these points will give you a contractible space because the fiber is empty set and BD of empty set is, is, is zero. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, if you take some, for example, over here, an emotion could be, uh, just let me change the color. 
So, so for example, here, since this is an emotion, you may have some crossings, right? So now you take this crossing, which is going to be, say, uh, green. So if you look at this, at this point in the modular space, the inverse image consists of two points. So the fiber over this, to, this point consists of two points. And now BD for these two points, uh, so this is already Z2, so this is going to be R in, R in, RP infinity, right? So BD or BZ2. So this is uh, RP infinity. Right. And so the claim is that if you take here in the modular space M sub R, all the points uh, that are uh, this fiber of two points, then these two points, th these points in M sub R form a subset which is homo homotopy equivalent to R infinity. And so uh, now for in this case, I considered maps of dimension two. So, the, uh, so it means that here is this WR. So this is this red space, WR. Uh, so this is uh, some big space and it maps uh, to the modular space. And uh, for each point, the fiber is going to be uh, to the, like um, for almost all points, the fiber is going to be a two dimensional uh, singular manifold. Uh, and so for example, for this point, the fiber, I would like this to be torus. For example, for this point, uh, the fiber over this point is uh, a torus with one circle collapsed. And over here we have torus with two circles collapsed. But of course, uh, in this module space, there are many points uh, with fiber torus. And so all this uh, part, so all this part uh, could be, uh, could consist of points uh, with fiber torus. And then the question, so this is a subspace of the modular space. And the question, what is its homotopy type? And the, the answer is that it's homotopy equivalent to BD of, of, of the torus. Okay, uh, Alvaro, that, does that make sense? Yeah, that helps a lot, yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you for the question, thank you. Uh, and so you can see that this modular space is extremely complicated. And the reason is just because this BD of FR is very complicated. Even for a surface with G handles, so if you consider a surface F with G handles, it's, uh, say BD of this, uh, of this surface, is already poorly understood. Uh, we don't know all characteristic classes uh, of diffeomorphism groups of, of, of the surface. And uh, you can imagine that when the fiber is not two dimensional, but, but high dimensional, uh, these are even more complicated and uh, it's, uh, it's hard to do calculations. Now, uh, a second. So, uh, but, uh, still, this is somewhat uh, helpful in the sense that, look, uh, if <coughs> we are lucky and the number of different fibers is, say, for example, finite or maybe countable, but uh, there is some stratification. Uh, so if adjacencies of all the strata are nice, then uh, this strata form a filtration. And using this filtration, we get a spectral sequence such that the spectral sequence converges to the cohomology group of the modular space. And on the other hand, the second page uh, would be just uh, the cohomology group of the classifying space of the diffeomorphism group of fibers. And uh, so this gives uh, a way to calculate the cohomology of the modular space in these cohomology groups. But frankly, these cohomology groups are very complicated. And uh, I expect that uh, it's much easier to calculate this and then probably to get some information about, about diffeomorphism groups of fibers. Though this has not been done even in, uh, in the case of maps of low dimensional maps. Uh, now uh, let's discuss uh, topology of formal modular spaces. And I uh, want to uh, convince you that the module, that uh, the modular space formal solution, this HMR, is relatively simple. 
So for this, I first need to give a few definitions. So suppose that we have a map germ from Rm to Rm, then a diffeomorphism of a map germ is just the coordinate change uh, in the source and the target. So this is a pair of diffeomorphism G and H of Rm and Rn respectively preserving the origin such that the composition H F G inverse is F. So this is a change of coordinates that do not change F. And then the diffeomorphism group uh, of F is denoted by diff F. Now uh, we actually have the notion of singularity type and the singularity type uh, may not uh, depend on the dimension. Uh, basically, when you have a map, uh, with, say, for example, a map germ, a singular map germ, and you may multiply f by the identity map of uh, Rk, uh, then, uh, of course, this is going to be a new map of a manifold of high dimension to a manifold of high dimension. But we still want to say that the singularity type is the same. And then, uh, <clears throat> for any map F, we may choose a minimal representative of the singularity type of F. So basically, roughly speaking, we are choosing a map uh, such that uh, it cannot be uh, represented. So we are choosing a map MF such that it cannot be represented as a product of some map three times identity. Okay. This is roughly speaking. And so once we choose a minimal representative of the singularity type of F, we can calculate its uh, diffeomorphism group. And then we can find a maximal compact subgroup of diff MF. And this is called the stable diffeomorphism group of a regional uh, map, germ, uh, map germ of F. So there is some uh, technicalities here. And uh, for example, one has to prove that the maximal complex subgroup exists. One has to prove that it is uh, essentially unique. Uh, this was done by Wall and Janic. And so this is known to be true. And now uh, the, to describe uh, the topology of formal modular uh, space, um, I, I would just say that this is the infinite loop space of the Tom spectrum of a stable vector bundle over the union of EGR, where GR ranges over stable diffeomorphism groups of map terms of solutions of R. So this may uh, be a little bit hard to understand right away, but I will give a couple of examples. And uh, I hope those examples will uh, clarify what is written over here. So first, let's consider um, uh, formal submersions. So <coughs> uh, suppose that we have a submersion of dimension D from Rn plus D to Rn. Right? Now we need to find a minimal representative of the singularity type. And the minimal representative is going to be a map from Rd to R0. You can see that F is equivalent to this uh, MF because F is just the same as MF cross the identity on Rn. Uh, and it's clear that this MF is a minimal representative of F because, uh, well, you cannot split here anything else from MF. And now the stable diffeomorphism group of F, by definition, is a maximal compact subgroup of the diffeomorphism group of M MF. So basically, we are taking the uh, coordinate changes in Rd and coordinate changes in R0, uh, such that MF does not change. And so in this case, the maximal compact subgroup of this uh, coordinate changes is OD, because you can rotate this Rd any way you want, and uh, this would not uh, change MF. Um, so the conclusion is that the modular space uh, HMR of formal submersion dimension D is the infinite loop space of the top spectrum associated with a stable vector bundle over BOD, so this uh, classifying space of OD. So in general, we have uh, this connect uh, disjoint union of uh, 
uh, BGR, where GR ranges over stable diffeomorphism groups of map terms of solutions. But in this case, we just have only one uh, solution term. And because of that, we have just uh, one space over here. Um, <coughs> this spectrum that we get uh, here is uh, Matson Tillman uh, space uh, spectrum, MTOD. And then, uh, so here over here, we see that this is uh, the modular space of submersions of dimension D. And this is the modular space of uh, formal submersions of dimension D. But of course, we, uh, as we've seen over here, so if you write the spectral sequence over here, then in the spectral sequence, you would need to calculate the cohomology groups of the classifying space of diffeomorphisms of manifolds. Uh, while over here, you need to calculate the cohomology groups of BOD, which are known. And uh, because of that, at least for characteristic classes, the characteristic classes of formal subversions are easy to calculate, while cohomology classes of uh, submersions are not so easy to calculate. Um, <coughs> so now I wanted actually a different example. Uh, so and another example is, uh, is for fold maps. So let me uh, recall the definition of fold maps. First, uh, let me consider, just say that suppose that we have a smooth map f from m uh, to n, then a point is singular if uh, the rank of the differential is less than the minimum of the dimension of m and dimension of n. Uh, if the point is not singular, then it's called regular. Uh, for uh, functions, every function can be approximated by a Morse function, uh, where a Morse function uh, is a function with relatively simple singularities. A singular point is a more singular point if there are neighborhoods uh, uh, such that uh, the function can be written uh, in coordinates uh, as a quadratic form. Here, uh, this number i, uh, the number of um, uh, the number of uh, negative signs is called the index of the critical point. But since uh, we can uh, choose different coordinate charts, in particular, we can choose a different coordinate chart on R, we can always arrange that this number I is less than uh, N minus I. So we can uh, basically flip the R coordinate so that all negative terms become positive terms and all positive terms become the negative terms. Uh, now, uh, again, suppose that F is a smooth map of manifolds, X is a point in M, and then we choose a sufficiently small neighborhood of X. Then a point uh, is said to be regular. Uh, if uh, we can choose coordinates on U, such that F restricted to U is this projection, then, then this is a regular point. And uh, the point is a fault point. Uh, if in the neighborhood of this point, the map F is just uh, the product of a Morse function uh, times the identity map on R n minus one. So this is the definition of a fold map. <coughs> you can think of a fold map locally as a trivial parametric family of uh, Morse functions. Uh, actually, right. So let me now uh, stop sharing, and I'm going to uh, switch to uh, a different camera, to this camera, yeah. Okay. So I hope that you can, uh, do, do you see well? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, very good. Very good. So actually, Sure. Should we say maybe? I'll, sorry, because that you have you to, to you have to pin this video now to see it's larger, right? Ah, right, right. Pro, pro, yeah. So okay. So yeah. Could you please, uh, everyone, just uh, go to uh, the 
my video and just pin this to make it large, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Now probably everyone else knew already, <laughs> but for me these things are still <laughs> very mysterious. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, it's kind of these things also change in time, so this time, so it's kind of it's hard to follow how everything works. Okay. Anyways, so uh, again for fold maps, so we have these regular map jobs, right? So this is just a projection. Uh, and now for this projection, we have already found uh, a minimal representative. So this is just a map uh, from RD to R0. And we have calculated that the stable symmetry group is just OD, right? Uh, now, a fold map germ of index K, so it just looks like this. Uh, on the last coordinates, we just have the identity map, right? And over here, we just have a Morse function. And now for the minimal representative, we just uh, take away this uh, like trivial part. And then we, we just get this Morse function. And the stable symmetry group is a group of changes of coordinates. And you can see that this is like this OD cross OD plus one minus K. And here, actually, I assume that uh, the dimension D here should be, I guess, even. So D is even. So when D is odd, uh, it's a little bit more complicated over here. And if I don't just don't want to go into detail, but uh, when D is odd, then you can also uh, flip not only kind of this coordinates, but the, co the only coordinate uh, in, in the target. So over here, you have R, this is R plus one. But when D is even, uh, here you have the odd number of factors, and because of that, you cannot uh, flip R. And so, because of that, the stable symmetry group here in this case is a little bit easier. But even in the case where D is odd, it's not going to be uh, like overly complicated. Uh, in, in any case, uh, now we want this HMR, and we want to understand this HMR, and uh, the theorem states that. This is the infinite loop space of the Tom spectrum uh, over uh, some space, which is just a union of BOD. So this BOD, it comes from uh, regular map jobs. And uh, it is uh, BOD plus one. So this just comes from uh, O0 cross OD plus one. Then you have BO1 cross BOD. So this is uh, this comes from uh, more singular points of index one. So here you have just O one cross O D and and so on, and you can see that these spaces are yeah, not so complicated. So their cohomology groups are not so difficult to calculate, and so because of that you get uh, the cohomology uh, groups of uh, this Tom spectrum and the infinite loop space, and so you get the characteristic classes of the modular space of uh, formal solutions. And so uh, I hope that I convinced you that uh, this space is much simpler than uh, the modular space uh, of solutions. Because over here, you also have this kind of stratification. But in uh, M sub R, this strata, first they kind of intersect. And uh, in the intersection, you have something uh, more complicated. And then you have the different like fibers, and instead of BOD here, you have BD for many folds, and this is like very, very complicated. Uh, but on the other hand, as I said, uh, in many cases, these are just uh, homotopy equivalent, or this map uh, gives a group completion. Um, Rustam, can you maybe say how are all these BODs kind of all glued to each other? Right. Like and th this is actually kind of a uh, kind of an, a very good question. And this is something that I was thinking for quite uh, a while, and I still don't have a very good answer to this question. So on one side, uh, there is a construction, and I can give this construction of the Tom, Tom spectrum, right? <coughs> and from that construction, you can see how these spaces are glued to each other. Uh, so let me call the space, I don't know, let me call the space T. Okay. And so I'm going to give another construction of the space T. Uh, 
And from another construction of the space T, uh, you can see how these strata are uh, attached to, to each other. But the problem is that the other construction is not uh, kind of so, so, so visual. So here's another construction. So uh, we start with some uh, B O N. And so here, this N uh, basically corresponds to the dimension of the image. Uh, actually, the f the, so this N is going to be to go to infinity. OK, so I'm kind of constructing something finite, but you have to take the limit of this construction. And then over B O N, uh, there is a fiber bundle. Uh, and this fiber bundle, uh, this is just the universal bundle, Xi N. So this Xi N is the universal vector bundle over uh, B O N, right? So the fibers are just n dimensional spaces. Uh, in particular, this is a vector spaces, and everywhere you have just uh, the origin here, right? Because this is a vector space. And this space is just of dimension n. You cannot really identify this with Rn, so there is no canonical identification of the fiber with Rn, but we know that there is a, an isomorphism of this space with Rn. So this space is uh, it's a vector space isomorphic to Rn. And then uh, what we do is we take uh, R n plus d uh, is its origin. And we consider a map germ f, which is a solution germ. Uh, so then we say that t consists of all map germs f that are solution germs. So these are solution germs from r n plus d 0 to the fiber uh, Rn0, which is Xi n over some point B. I don't know, so just, just the fiber of Xi n. <coughs> and uh, so this is uh, another construction uh, and of this space T. It's not very long construction, right? But uh, it's, it may not be like immediately uh, helpful. So the thing is that kind of when you consider all these maps, so you can see that this T is stratified. In particular, we can consider uh, map germs of the same type. And if you have map germs of the same type, then you can see that uh, <coughs> they form in T uh, these subspaces uh, of the form like uh, BOD, BOD plus one, and so on. I, I hope this uh, answers the question. Yeah, thank you, I think. Um, okay, maybe, maybe just to clarify. So, so, for example, suppose that we consider here just like sub, subset, like let's call us, uh, let's call this subset, I don't know, K. So suppose that K is a uh, subset of T that consists of uh, regular germs. Okay, so just basically we consider here regular germs, right? From Rn plus D to Rn. So these are regular map germs, so these are just projections. Okay, from Rn plus D to Rn. And then uh, the claim is that this is homotopy equivalent, at least after when the limit, so when kind of, so maybe I should call this N, T N, right? So because this kind of depends on this N. But the claim is that the limit as n tends to infinity of kn is b o d. Um, so kind of the idea of the proof, that, like to show that this is going to be b o d, and this is just the same as uh, like in this picture that I was kind of saying that this b o d it comes from this uh, the stable symmetry group of d of the regular map germs. And so the idea of the proof that the limit is going to be BOD is by, by as follows. So you, you consider this map and uh, the kernel of this map is going to be d-dimensional, 
So this is a kernel of F. And you can see that the kernel of F is of dimension D, right? Because this is just a projection of Rn plus D to Rn. So its dimension is D. Uh, and then you can see that basically what you're considering here are subspaces of dimension D of Rn plus D. And then you take the limit as n tends to infinity. And what you do is you consider d dimensional subspaces in R infinity. And d dimensional subspaces in R infinity, they give you BOD. So this is like a rough, rough idea of why this is so. And in general, it's kind of, kind of similar. So you consider here not regular map germs, but something else. And so you just do this construction and you take the limit and you get uh, some, some B or something. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. I think that kind of my time is, is, is up now. So I think that I should probably fi finish here, stop here. So kind of if, if you have uh, some, Questions. I can, uh, of course, I, I can go on and on, and I can discuss some other questions if you ask. But uh, otherwise, I think that I should stop here. Uh, okay. Then yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Rustam. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. It was my pleasure.